Okay, hello and welcome to the weather update. It's 8.30, October 26, 2020. And it is another dreary day across the area again. Um, you know, uh, clouds moved in and we had just drizzle all day long. Uh, it was pretty miserable. Drizzle, damp in the mid-50s. And the night, uh, luckily the drizzle has stopped this evening. Uh, and it's just very uh, humid out. In fact, you can see the higher dew points over New Jersey with dew points up into the 60s. So a very damp night across the area again. Just yucky. You can see those dew points in the 60s uh, over uh, New Jersey. That's heading our way. You can sort of see where there's a stall frontal boundary. You can see to our north and east dew points are in the 40s in, uh, in uh, New England there. But we have dew points in the 60s here. So you can sort of see where that stall frontal boundary is just sitting over us. If we actually include the boundaries, I think. This, is, this doesn't actually show fronts, I guess. I wish it would show fronts. That would be nice. Um, it says precipitation analysis, but I don't know if it's going to show the fronts. It doesn't really show the fronts. Uh, but you can see, I guess I'll have to draw it for you. Uh, but you can see there's just a stall front right over us, uh, right over here. So we'll draw it. So we get this stalled front right about over here, I would say. So this is where all the humidity is. All right, so you can see all the humidity uh, that's starting to come into our area uh, ahead of this warm front here. Uh, but it will move. We will uh, move this back as a cold front eventually. Uh, but yeah, it's it's yucky out there, and uh, it's a good night to uh, yeah. You gotta have the AC on if uh, or have a dehumidifier. A dehumidifier may not be a bad idea here on Long Island. <laughs> it really may not be. Uh, very damp out there. If we look at the surface analysis from the WPC, you'll see that stall frontal boundary. Well, it actually doesn't show it over. It just has like a washed out trough. Um, but let's talk about what's really going on and uh, what everybody's interested in. That is Hurricane Zeta. Zeta is now a hurricane. Uh, so let's get the latest on Zeta from the Hurricane Center. Uh, so Hurricane Zeta, landfall of Zeta is expected in a few hours with hurricane conditions and a dangerous storm surge. Hurricane warnings extended southward and westward along the Yucatan Peninsula. So its location is 19.9 north, 86.6 west, about 45 miles south-southeast of Cozumel, Mexico. Maximum sustained winds have increased to 80 miles an hour. Moving northwest at, three, uh, northwest at 12 miles an hour. Minimum central pressure 983 millibars, 29.03 inches. Uh, and uh, you can see those, uh, the, ex the extent is out up to 25 miles, and the tropical storm force winds extend out up to 115 miles from the center. So it's heading for the Yucatan, uh, unfortunately. It's going gonna, it's gonna to make a landfall there, those poor folks in the Yucatan. And then the Gulf Coast is under threat again. So uh, we look at the latest warning cone, and you will see hurricane watches have already been posted for much of Louisiana uh, and into Mississippi. Uh, and hurricane warnings are in effect for the Yucatan Peninsula. It'll probably weaken somewhat when it moves over the Yucatan, but then once it gets back over the Gulf again, it's going to strengthen uh, quite a bit. Uh, and uh, we may, we, well, we'll see how much it can strengthen, uh, but you've seen how these storms have surprised us before. And again, we are at the last letter of the Greek alphabet, uh, and then we start a new set once the next storm uh forms and you know there will be or at least i would say at least two to three more storms at least so we're going to easily shatter uh the all-time record uh for the most storms so uh let's take a look at the latest imagery from zeta here this is the infrared and you can see that convection it doesn't really have a classic too much of a classic look but you can see it's got the tr classic tropical look and you can see it's heading over the poor folks, the tip of Yucatan again, uh, just dealing with another uh, tropical system, uh, one after another after another, uh, and it looks like the Gulf will be too. Uh, let's look at the visible short wave here, so you can sort of see that convection going on here. So there's the convection, you can clearly see it bubbling up there uh, all around the center as this thing is continuing to strengthen uh, as, uh, as it approaches the Yucatan Peninsula. So uh, let's go and take a look at the models. So this is the hurricane models and the track seems to be now centered right over New Orleans. 
Uh, that's where they seem to be centering the track, but of course this could always change, and then we would wind up getting the remnants up here around Thursday night to Friday. Um, intensity guidance. A lot of the models just keep it steady. Some of them have it weakening back to a tropical storm, and a lot of them just keep it steady. Uh, and some even take it up to a cat, too. Again, expect the unexpected, because after all, it is 2020. So um, let's go look at the latest models. And I'm going to see what's going to be happening with this storm. And that's the first thing we're going to be focusing on is Zeta. So uh, let's go to the Gulf, the southeast here, get the southeast view. So uh, it will emerge. This really doesn't go far enough south. I would have liked it to go a little further to the south. Uh, there's no other region we could use. Tropics. Well, we just have Western Atlantic, so we'll have to use that one so you can get an idea of where this is going to go. So uh, this is the surface on the GFS. Okay, so you'll see here on the surface that it'll, it'll, it'll interact with Yucatan. It doesn't look like it weakens very much from moving over there. And it just holds its own, and it could wind up strengthening, uh, possibly, upon making, because I noticed the pressure is dropping as it approaches. and makes a landfall right over New Orleans right there uh, as a hurricane. So this, yeah, this would be, and this landfall would be Wednesday night into Thursday on the GFS. Uh, if we look at the wind profile here, I'll back this up to here. Um, seems like it's underestimating, but you could see that uh, that wind profile gets stronger before it makes that landfall right over uh, New Orleans there. Hard to say because this, this was so far zoomed out, it's hard to see that compact area. We would have to get a little closer to that area and see. But this uh, will strengthen once it uh, is done with the Yucatan. I believe it will. Uh, conditions are favorable for it for sure. Uh, with these warm water temperatures still in the Gulf, and you know, ridging light, there's not much, uh, there's not much wind shear in this area, uh, so that's another thing that's favorable for the strengthening of this thing. All right, I'm going to change this to the southeast so we can get a closer look here on the GFS um, of this, and you can see here it is, uh, and you can see it's strengthening uh, just before it hit, it makes landfall, and if this track were to verify, this would be a very bad scenario for New Orleans. Uh, if this track would have verify. And again, that landfall would be Wednesday night to Thursday. Uh, and then it would move in, dissipate, uh, well, become a tropical depression, and then the remnants would wind up moving. Uh, looks like coming out over the center of the remnants would come out over the mid-Atlantic at this point on this track. On, and this is, again, the 18Z GFS we're looking at. Let's see if we've got enough of the NAM in to see uh, what the NAM is going to do with this. So the NAM, again, similar idea to the GFS, and again, the worst of the winds would be on the right-hand side of the storm. Clearly, that's where the purple is, right there. Um, move this over to the, back to the precipitation map. That's what, that's what it looks like on the precipitation map of the NAM and landfall. Maybe just a tad slower than the GFS. Uh, but it still has it uh, really being a formidable hurricane uh, by the time it makes uh, landfall over there in Louisiana. Uh, switch this back to the GFS. And again, this is what the GFS looks like. See, GFS is a little faster at the timing. Uh, but uh, those are uh, what some of the models look like. Don't have enough of the HRRR, and we can. Uh, I don't think the R gem is going to go far enough out. All right, it does. Okay, uh, so uh, this is the R gem. Not as strong of a system, uh, but it really uh, could bring some really heavy rains to Louisiana. That's the R gem. Uh, we can look at another model, the ICON model, as well. This is the ICON model. Tighter isobars on this. For some reason, the R gem is an outlier and has this thing much weaker, and I'm not buying that at all. Um, but I think the GFS and the NAM seem to give us the best idea of what's going to happen with this with this system. So let's uh, go to the North American view and uh, 
while we remain on the top of it, topic of Zeta, let's look at this model. This is the European. And we're going to look at it on windy.com here. This is where it currently is right now. It's underestimating its strength a little bit. So it moves over the Yucatan. And then emerges out over the Gulf tomorrow evening. And once it does, you can see it's going to start strengthening. Look at that. The Euro really has this thing become... Oh, wow. So the Euro has this thing really getting intense. And look at that. Looks like that track yeah, takes it right over New Orleans. It has a 105, uh, 105 mile an hour. Again, if this were to verify, this would be a major disaster for New Orleans. Now, New Orleans got off with missing every single storm, and the storms have gone to the west of New Orleans. We'll have to see if that kind of trend continues, or this, this time uh, their, their luck will run out. Uh, but uh, this this could be very bad for New Orleans, very bad for New Orleans. Um, so let's go to the uh, back to the tropical tidbits site, and we're going to look at the upper air. So there's Zeta right there over the Gulf tomorrow night. Uh, you can see we've got this ridge over us that uh, got westerlies over us, um, and We'll have to see if we can get the sun out Tuesday or Wednesday. It's going to be hard. It's going to be hard. But you can see what's going on. You have this trough here, so this is going to this is helping to pull the Zeta northward into Louisiana. Uh, and then what's going to happen is that trough is going to get absorbed. It's going to get absorbed into this trough here, and then the remnants of it will be uh, shifted off to the east coast uh, Thursday night to Friday with some heavy rain. Uh, and a cold rain too, perhaps even some snow, perhaps, in in upstate there. Um, and uh, again, you can see here that we've got uh, cold air, so it'll be cold next week. Uh, and then uh, and then we see another ridge build, and then we have a couple of troughs coming through. But then after that, another huge ridge again. So very un you know we do have some troughs coming in, but uh, it's not. And then they, and then if you look down there. You see there are a couple of systems that could try to form. One there, and then uh, another one over there. So we're, we're still, we're still uh, in the thick of it here. Uh, this tropical season is going to keep going right to the end of this year, I think. Uh, maybe, maybe, for, maybe it will never end. Maybe it'll just keep going right through the winter. It's, it's anything, anything is possible at this point. So let's go look at the surface. And we will change the regions to the CODIS view. Oh, I meant to look at the European. Hold on, we're going to have to back that up for a minute. The European. So you can see there's that ridge, because the European has a bit of a different look to it. It's a little more of a deeper trough. It seems like there's a general agreement uh, on this. The European, uh, again, wants to, after we get done with the cold air, we're going to deal with more warm weather as we get into uh, Thursday, November 5th again with a huge ridge in the east. Um, so uh, let's go back to GFS and let's look at the CONUS here. And we will go back to the surface. So we're going to have pretty much weak ridge in our area. We try to push the stall front off to the south for a little bit and hopefully not deal with any rain tomorrow and Wednesday. Uh, and then uh, there's the uh, there's what's left of Zeta, probably a tropical depression, heading right along the stall frontal boundary. And it looks like the core of the heavy rain might go just to the south. But there could be some cold air coming in behind and actually some snow perhaps in upstate New York and interior New England perhaps as this thing pulls away. Uh, and then it finally pulls away. And this would be on Friday that we might see that snow. Maybe even a couple of flakes here. You never know. It's going to be a real cold rain. And then this nice, beautiful high builds in. Gives us a nice weekend, nice Saturday. And then another nice front comes through on Tuesday. Uh, but then we see that return flow develop as we get later into next week again. Uh, and then if we move the surface along, you'll see there's another storm there. And this, this could be bad if this were to verify. This is November 8th. Uh, uh, it looks like there's a low and then a tropical system getting absorbed into that low and being pushed right up the east coast. So, uh, yeah, we're not out of the woods either. But that's, of course, ways, a ways in the future. We've got to deal with one storm at a time, and the storm that we're dealing with right now that actually does exist is Zeta. 
Uh, so uh, let's take a closer look at our area here. And we'll go ahead and look at our our precipitation chances on the NAM. And I think I think we're really not going to see too much uh, in the way of rain over the next couple of days. I think it will be dry. It looks like there's an area of rain that goes by to our north tomorrow night. Might bring a couple of showers. Uh, but other than that, I don't think we're going to see any substantial rain. It wouldn't be until we get into Thursday uh, that these rains and this moisture from Zeta would come in and give us the rain uh, and uh, then we would be dealing with the heavy rain and uh, if we looked at the total accumulated precip the NAM isn't going to go far enough out uh, but if we go back to the GFS you will see uh, that uh, see how much they give us so this is the GFS and you can see it has the heaviest rain off to the south um, so uh, let's go look at the temperatures on the GFS and see what our temperature trends are going to be as we head into tomorrow. Uh, not going to be that warm because we have this cold front. You can see where the front is sitting right to the south. Temperatures will be in the mid-50s for us. Uh, we drop back into the 40s on Wednesday. And again, we'll have dry rare. We're going to get out of this uh, humidity. Uh, Wednesday, here we go with temperatures in the upper 50s to around 60. And Thursday, you can see where that front is sitting, literally. If you're in Jersey, you could be close to 70 and stuck in the humidity here. We'll be uh, cold and damp with the rain in the upper 40s. Uh, and then look what happens on Friday. It really gets cold, and uh, temperatures drop into the 30s with the rain uh, starting to taper off. It's going to be a cold rain, maybe a couple of flakes mixed in even, uh, perhaps. Uh, and then uh, for Saturday, we're going to struggle to make it to 50, but we'll have some sunshine. And then we recover by Sunday into the 50s. Uh, let me look at the dew points, and for that we'll, we'll uh, use the NAM because I kind of like using the NAM better for dew points. 12 kilometer NAM, so you get an idea of what's going to happen here. Cause this is a, so this really shows up what's happened tonight. You can see that humidity kind of came in on us. It's damp, uh, but the uh, dry air comes in tomorrow morning. Dew points lower into the 40s. It'll be much more comfortable, uh, and maybe we'll even see the sun. Maybe, maybe we'll have to look at the cloud uh, forecast. Uh, and you can see there are the dew points in the 40s. And then the NAM tries to bring a little bit of that humidity in Thursday. It actually has that front a little further to the north compared to the GFS. And you can see, look at that really ju juicy tropical air. Uh, dew points near 70. And meanwhile, north of the front, dew points are in the low 40s. So that's quite a well-defined front right there. You can easily see it. Now, I have a feeling the placement on the GFS is different. So let me uh, pull up the GFS here. Yeah, GFS is a little further to the south on those dew points. So it depends where that front winds up, obviously. If you're, uh, you know, from Tom's River on south, you have more of a chance of getting into that humidity. But hopefully for the rest of us, the humidity will be gone. I don't want to deal with it anymore. It's horrible. Um, so uh, now we'll go look at the, the uh, skies. So this is the sky uh, cloud forecast from the GFS. Keeps us pretty much socked in the clouds tomorrow, socked in the clouds Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And we would have to wait till Saturday before we finally get some clearing. All right. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's just been one hell of a stretch without the sun, I'll tell you. And it's been horrible. I've noticed some breaks tonight, though, forming. So I'm hoping we'll see some breaks tomorrow. So this is tomorrow on the NAM. And you can see the NAM actually does give us some sunshine in the afternoon. Uh, Late morning and the afternoon hours, we might get a little sun and some clouds. Here's Wednesday, uh, and Wednesday, we're just struggling to get this front off to the south, and it just doesn't really make it very far to the south, and we're dealing with a lot of clouds uh, again. So if you want clearer skies, you'd have to go to the north. That is the NAM. Uh, we can also look at the RGEM model. Uh, that's the other sky cover model we can use. And I'll also look at the Euro model, too, because we have that up on the windy.com site. So this is the RGEM, and again, it has a little bit of clearing tomorrow, maybe a little bit of a break uh, in the afternoon, and then uh, more clouds roll, and then we're kind of socked in the clouds on Wednesday, and that moisture from Zeta comes in. So, yeah, I know it would be nice if it would just not come up the coast, but again, this trough, just uh, we don't have the right setup to keep it south, unfortunately. Uh, and more rain is on the way, uh, and uh, we could also see some strong winds from that. That's the other thing. Uh, that we could see when it moves through. If we look at the wind speeds uh, on this GFS here, you will see uh, 
There's some strong winds. We may get some strong northeasterly winds, um, particularly offshore, obviously. And there could be some coastal flooding as well as freshwater flooding from all the rain. I mean, you can see the ra the wind that would come in, especially Friday, uh, from this. Uh, and uh, So, yeah, we'll have to keep an eye on that, obviously. Not going to be a... The wind isn't going to be a huge factor for us, but uh, it could be a problem for coastal areas. And, of course, people want to see fall foliage because uh, it's probably going to blow a lot of the leaves down, which is a bad timing. Um, so uh, let's look at the windy.com site. And uh, we'll uh, look at the sky cover. This is the, the European model. And see if that gives us any hope for maybe seeing the sun tomorrow. Here is 12 o'clock Tuesday. Uh, you can see there uh, maybe maybe a little break maybe a break uh, this is the European let's see if we get any better on Wednesday any better chances it doesn't look like it unfortunately yeah it pretty much keeps us socked in maybe you will get some it's just getting this front to the south is, is just going to be a problem you can see it does finally make it to the south by the evening but then the, the remnants of Zeta come our way and uh, bring us the rain Thursday and here's Friday, and then you could sort of see. We'll actually look at the wind gusts on this too as well. I want to look at that too, because we're gonna again see those wind gusts as we get to Thursday. Let's uh, move this along. So this is Thursday, not too windy yet, and it's mainly because you have a low pressure system and a very strong high pressure system that'll be moving in. So it's the gradient between the two that's gonna generate these winds, and you could see some 51 mile an hour gusts on Friday. So yeah, it's gonna be kind of breezy out there, uh, and uh, again, uh, it's gonna stay breezy on Friday and then Saturday. Uh, still breezy, uh, but uh, it'll be fair weather with a north to northwest wind. So I think that's gonna wrap up this weather update. There, it's one more thing I want to look at. Uh, yeah, let's look at the. These are the rainfall amounts from Zeta that are predicted, by the way, from the WPC. Uh, we could also look at the climate predictor. We'll just look at the WPC map. So this is the they they kind of dialed down the rain a little bit here. Uh, they have us in the two to four inch range. Um, I think that was the graphic uh, that uh, they they uh, have. Let's see. Well, this is another graphic that they have. So uh, we can also look, I think it's I think it was the WPC and then there's the Climate Prediction Center as well. Um, so if you look at the six to ten day outlook, uh, actually has temperatures below normal. So then that when we get that plunge uh, behind the remnants of Zeta, it's going to actually knock the temperatures down to a little bit below normal um, for at least a, a little while. So hopefully we can at least get some cooler weather in here. But the sun, I know I'm going nuts from it too. It's it's just the it's it's ridiculous, especially when you want to see the least change, and it's just so cloudy. And it's it's only if it's cloudy, but it's so gray and damp. Uh, you know, hopefully at least we can get some brightening. Hopefully at least tomorrow, and lower dew points. So you know, we get out there and check out the foliage because uh, if uh, we get a bad storm, it's going to knock a lot of it down. At least the wetlands, whatever is left, uh, the uplands. Hopefully there's hope for that still uh, as we get into November. So that's going to wrap up this weather update. Take care, and thank you for watching.